Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I am Penj and welcome back to Skyhaven, where last time out we built our lovely little airport here, although I don't really think we should call this place an airport. I think calling this place an airport makes it sound far more grandiose and important than it actually is, because what we have, really, is not an airport, but an airfield. This is most definitely an airfield. I mean, everything around here is very fieldy. We've got ourselves a grass runway. These are grass ramps, the main sort of road through the middle for all our service vehicles. That's just a great big kind of dirt track. And let's not forget that we are currently situated in the middle of a gigantic, massive, empty field as well. So I think, yeah, maybe not an airport, not quite yet. I think we'll kind of call ourselves an airfield. However, that's fine. That's absolutely fine because that gives us a bit of a goal. Can we change our lovely little kind of, you know, quite quaint fledgling airfield here into a great big bustling kind of, you know, huge big airport with proper huge planes and passenger terminals and all that kind of stuff going on? I'd like to think we could, but yes, we've got to start somewhere. This is where we've started and things have gone pretty well. We've got the basics in. So, you know, we've got the runways, we've got the taxi sort of road type things. We've got ourselves the little grass ramps. We've got the fuel store. We've got the cargo store and we have the office where the researcher people unlock shiny new things for us. And we have seen a fairly steady stream of planes coming in and stocking up on fuel or goods and then going out again to the point where, yeah, we've got all this stuff in. We've built all this kind of stuff here and you've know, got five ramps so we can currently accommodate five planes which is pretty good and we've done some research and we've got a number of researchers as well how many researchers do we have three so we've got three researchers so you know we're paying quite a bit of money on their wages as well and even though we've done all of this stuff we still find ourselves with one thousand and eighty nine dollars which is not too bad at all that's pretty impressive i'm quite happy with that we do have a little bit of a queue of planes sort of waiting to leave I think you're going to join the queue as well aren't you okay right so we might need to possibly might need to try and sort this out i mean do we need another runway or is that just going to complicate matters i do not know i'd like to think that we could operate with the ones of runway for now but uh yeah there we go so we'll see we'll see what we can do however however before we go any further i think we must address the uh the troubles that I had last time in understanding how the cargo worked because I got in a bit of a muddle with this. I think that was fairly obvious. And um, and yes, I kind of tried something that I thought was quite brilliant and quite clever and was going to save us all and was going to sort out all of our cargo problems. But, um, but no, that is not the case. So yeah, I completely failed to understand the whole cargo supply thing and it's left us in a bit of a silly situation. So we did have an initial contract with the Royal Post. They were going to deliver 50 bits of cargo to us at midnight. And I thought that was all fine. But then at some point in the late afternoon we'd burnt through all of the cargo that we had in store so we'd gone through the 50 cargo that we had we had nothing at all and then planes were coming in they were not able to leave because they were expecting cargo we could not oblige because we didn't have any and yes it was causing a bit of a backlog so we had to go in here and go to news air transporting and grab a great big load of instant cargo to be delivered to us pretty much straight away so that was fine so that got delivered it's a bit expensive but it's okay it got stuff moving again and then in my infinite lack of wisdom, I then went to the Royal Post contract that we had set up where they were going to deliver the 50 bits of cargo at midnight. And I cancelled that contract because I thought, well, do you know what? We've gone through 50 bits of cargo by four o'clock in the afternoon. Then, yo, know, we might as well get this new contract set up with 140 bits of cargo because that will keep us going for days on end. That'll keep us going for, you know, maybe a day and a bit. And, you know, in my mind, that was all perfectly sensible. 140 bits of cargo, that is lovely. Yeah, that'll keep us going for a good long while. However, it's now become apparent to me and the many people in the comments who pointed this out that we can't accommodate 140 bits of cargo because our cargo capacity is 50. And that's very obviously down here. I don't know why I didn't see it before. I'm not entirely sure. So, yeah, we've currently got... 35 out of 50 bits of cargo. So when the Royal Post turn up tonight at midnight with their great big truck full of 140 bits of cargo, I don't know where they're going to put it. They're going to have to take most of it away, I suspect. So we're going to waste a load of money on all this cargo that they simply, yo, they can't deliver to us because we can't put it anywhere, which is all very bad. So we need to do something about this. So we've got a couple of options. Either we could break this contract and then set up a new contract. I don't really want to do that. I don't want to break a second contract because it wastes money. And also, yeah, it'll give us a reputation. It'll give us a reputation as an airfield that is managed by someone who is completely disorganized. And we don't want that kind of reputation. So I think what we need to do is we need to look at ways of actually increasing the amount of cargo that we can store. Now, of course, we could... We could go to here. We could build ourselves another cargo storage thing because, of course, that will give us another 50, I imagine. So that's okay. But we could 
we could look at changing our research because there are things in here that might give us better cargo buildings or, you know, improve storage, I don't know, bigger barns or whatever. So if we're going to here, currently, yeah, currently we're getting office furniture. It's very important. You know, you want your swivel chairs, you want your chairs with wheels on so you can race around the office. However, that might have to wait, I'm afraid. So let's go over to is it airplane services. Yes, I think we need to get this. I think we need to get reinforced loading docks. So I think this is going to be quite good. So a warehouse with loading docks. So a warehouse implies that it's quite big and the loading docks implies that they can get stuff in and out quite quickly. So are we able to research this? Will it replace that? I mean, it's not very long to research. Four hours and 48 minutes, that's absolutely fine. It just moves over. Okay, wonderful. So there we go. So I think this is what we need to look at. We need to get those reinforced loading docks in pretty soon. Oh, it's got to seven o'clock and it appears to be nighttime. So daytime work hours have ended. During late hours, you'll be unable to accept any more flights and we'll have to wait until the morning at 7 a.m. for flights to continue coming in. Use this time to focus on improving other aspects of your airport. Okay. Right, I see. So everything just shuts down. So I think, I imagine the people that are here can actually leave. Hang on, because there are a few people around. So you're getting restocked. Yes, yeah, so the people that are here can leave. And that's quite nice. They've given us a big chunk of money, which is very welcome. So it looks like, hang on. Do our, do our people stay here? Do our researchers work through the night? It looks like they do. So we've got ourselves $2,000. That's, that's not a bad turnaround of profit there in an hour. Didn't we have about a thousand not that long ago? Right, and then we've got all these planes that are just waiting to leave. So if we just speed time on nice and quick, go on, there you go, away you go, wee to the skies. And uh, yep, you as well, absolutely. So get everyone out. But yeah, I mean, I think it looks like they're just doing the research through the night. So the research is just a continuous thing that will just keep happening, which is wonderful. So I think all we need to do is just sit and wait. Ah. Now, of course, because they're working through the night, we're paying them through the night, which you know, I think makes sense. I think that's perfectly fair. So, okay. So now are they just sort of sitting there. Ooh, what's that do? Ah, I imagine that is a super fast go to next day button or go to next event button or something. Should we press it? Is it what it does? Okay, let's press it. Yes, it's a super speedy button. Hang on, right. That's getting that research done nice and quick. Hang on. Whoa, right. Paused. Um, yeah, reinforced loading docks. Can't go to next. Okay, dismiss that. Um, let's get right, let's go back and get them their office furniture now. I feel like we took that away from them and it's made them sad. So, yes, it gives us a workflow boost. Okay, not really sure what that does, but we'll research that because it involves office furniture and that's fun because you know, wheelie chairs. So, there we go. And now, if we look in here, yes, 1550 for an air cargo warehouse, and we're gonna have to get that built very soon. The only thing is, are we going to then be able to pay people throughout the night? I think that might be a bit expensive. We might have to wing it a little bit and just see how we get on in the morning. Um, yeah. So if we put that down, that's just a great big warehouse type thing. Does it tell us how big it is? Does it tell us how much it stores? I don't know. I don't think it tells us anything about it. We have to kind of guess. I mean, we'll snap it right next to the other one. That makes perfect sense. So we'll drop that into there. And oh, that needs vehicles. Can we can we move vehicles? We must be able to move vehicles around. Um, vehicle vehicles are there. So move that over. Can we shuffle them about? What's that? Relocate vehicle. Right. Okay. So move two of those vehicles to the new thing, and then we need to assign this to all available ramps. Okay. Right. Happy with that. Now we haven't got much money left. So I suspect maybe by morning we might find ourselves a little bit broke, but we can now accommodate 200 units of cargo. Now we have got, we've acquired a bit of extra cargo. This must come with cargo as well. So when we build the cargo warehouse, it comes with its own sort of little private stash of things. So we've got to get rid of those as well. But when they deliver the 140, we're now not going to be wasting all of it. We're going to waste a little bit of it, but not the entire lot. So, okay. That's all good. That's all good. Now, the only problem is, if we get rid of that, the only problem is now, are we going to be able to make it through the night time? I don't know if we are. Why is it taking us out of super speedy mode? Can we can we not go back into super speedy mode? Clearly not. No. Okay. I'd like to go to super speedy mode, please. That would make me that would make me happier. What are we waiting for? Are we waiting for a delivery? Yes, there. Is that our cargo? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> oh no. 
That costs five hundred and sixty dollars. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. We're we're going to be fabulously poor by the morning. We're going to be horribly, horribly broke. New contracts were unlocked for companies: Royal Aviation Company, Aircraft Transport, and Travel. Okay. There's a thing down here. Yeah. Contracts window, but the contracts window is locked. It's locked away. I wonder if that's hidden behind a um a thing that we need to unlock over in our sort of uh, our science area. Okay, right, that's fine. Let's move time on until the morning and just see how much money we don't have by, was it seven o'clock? <laughs> oh good, we've done office furniture. Um, New contracts, yeah, you told us that before. Okay, let's get ourselves, let's get ourselves the next thing. Let's get advanced barrel logistics. I've kind of got these two things done here. Oh yeah, we've got an air traffic control thing unlocked. Oh, we need to put that in, we need to put that in. Yeah, let's get this done. That is a two-unit barrel stock station. Oh, that's very exciting. Okay, so we'll have one of those in. We'll try and keep up to date with this sort of red line. So the red line is representing where we are, I imagine. It's gone to... Oh, each... Okay, each day as we see it is a year. So we've gone from 1916. It's now 1917. Yeah, and that thing is moving along. This line is moving along. So yeah, we're going to try and keep up with the right sort of tech as opposed, you know, as opposed to where that line is. So we'll try and keep up to, you know, sort of current progress... So we'll get advanced barrel logistics in. So here we go. Let's see how much money we do not have when the actual day starts. So, oh my goodness me, we're going to be about a grand down. Yeah, we're about a grand down. Well, isn't that fun? Okay, let's try and get 501 sort of money back in by just putting you on on ramp number one, which um, which is our finest ramp. It's, it's our most privileged ramp for our most finest, bestest of all the customers. So absolutely welcome. In you come. I mean, if you'd like to leave a tip, that would be nice if you could leave a tip because we're a little bit short on the cash. But uh, but yeah, in you come, people. Come on, let's get lots of planes in. Okay, a few flights are coming in, which is wonderful. Hopefully the money will start trickling in as well, which is very nice. I think what we need to do, I think we've proven our worth now with making sure that our planes, yeah, we're able to get sort of cargo and get fueled and all that kind of stuff. We've done okay at that. I think, you know, I mean, maybe don't look at the money to actually prove that, but in terms of the mechanics of it, you know, we've got the right sort of kit going on. We've got enough vehicles and now we've got enough cargo and all that kind of stuff. So we're okay at this. We're okay at making sure that we're able to get sort of freight planes and, you know, refueling stuff sorted. I think our next big goal should be passengers. I think we should see if we can get some passengers into our airport. Because, of course, as it said on the 1916 sort of era thingamajig that popped up at the start of the game, the passengers in this particular time period, people who are going to go on a plane, are going to be rich. So if we get in all the passenger services, so I don't know, like a terminal, I imagine. I imagine we need a little terminal and then some sort of trucks to shuffle them to the uh, planes. I think we could make a bit of money on that. Now, of course, we're going to have to invest. We'll have to invest in a bit of research and all that kind of stuff. And I don't really know what we need to get sort of passengers coming in and flights, you know, passenger flights scheduled and what have you. But I think it's probably worth doing. I think that could make us a nice bit of money. Um, however, right now, I'm looking very nervously at our fuel. I'm looking very nervously because we cannot afford any more fuel. Hang on. Can we just get some people paying, please? Right, that's a little bit more encouraging. Right, anybody that's just got cargo because we've got so much cargo. We need to get rid of some of this cargo, please. So we'll just kind of pick people that are just needing a little bit of a top up of, you know, some stuff in boxes. Um, you're taking 206. Yep, absolutely. In you come. In you come. So this is all fine. We're on minus 257. Our fuel is looking dangerously, dangerously low. Uh, we've completed advanced barrel logistics. Okay, let's go and see what we can do. If we can get out, ah, what's that? Universal Air Cargo Terminal. And oh, no, that's cargo terminal, that's not people. Um, passenger services, yes. Here we go. Base hospitality. Now, does that put us a bit ahead of the curve here? Because the red line is there showing you know, the era, the year that we're in. Are we going to be ahead? This is exciting. Okay, so yes, this unlocks an airport terminal, a right omnibus S1, and a Busung ZU560. Oh, that's the little... That looks like the one that carries the bags. And that, I guess, is the one that carries the people to the plane and obviously from the plane back to the terminal. Let's get this research. Eight hours and 48 minutes. So it's going to take most of the day, but that's absolutely fine. So, yeah, we'll have that, please. I'm a little bit worried about our fuel. I think we're going to run out of fuel. So we now just need to you know, solely pick flights that are, that are to do with cargo and hope that we just get lots of those in. Because, yeah, we're going to run out of money and we will not be able to refuel. We've got a couple of people in right now. 
And if they get refueled, I was going to say we've got a bit of money, but then yes, of course, we're paying our hourly rate for, you know, staff and other stuff. Right. We've got a bit of money coming in. We've got a bit of money coming in. Um, you two down here. Oh, no. Oh, no. We've not got any people that just solely want cargo. Can we do this? Is someone going to come in? No, no, we're going to struggle. Okay, okay. It's all fine. It's all fine. Something will something will work and it'll all be good. We've got no slots left anyway right now. We do have ourselves a little bit of money. We've got a tiny bit of money coming in. However, all the people that wish to land want some fuel and some cargo. You two might be okay, though. There's probably enough fuel for you and possibly, uh, if we go here, you. There might be enough fuel for you to ah, and then yes, you just want five bits of cargo, and you're willing to pay two hundred and four dollars for that. You're absolutely well, yeah, you come in. You're absolutely welcome. Welcome aboard. I think we're going to have to just sort of bite the bullet and accept that we need to buy some fuel because the number of flights that just want cargo is relatively limited. A lot of them do want refueling as well, so we'll have to pay out eight hundred and forty of our just over one thousand dollars to get two thousand units of fuel in. But then that will open up the door to also get more planes in and they're going to pay a bit more and all that kind of stuff to get the fuel. But yeah, look, everybody here wants fuel. We occasionally get the one in. I mean, I think all five right now are OK. They just want uh, they just want cargo. But we're going to struggle a little bit because, yeah, it's not quite as popular. Oh, he says there's two things appear that just want cargo. OK, all oh, three of them. Brilliant. OK, <laughs> oh, I'm glad we just ordered a massive load of fuel. Isn't that wonderful? Um, OK, well, right. Let's get everybody in. We don't have very much money left. We do not have very much money. We need that fuel to come in sooner rather than later. So yeah, we can get rid of say 345 fuel here and get $501 for it because that's going to be very nice. But we currently can't do that. Now we can. Now we can. The fuel has come tumbling back in. Um, right. I'd like to refuel that plane for $501, please. Yeah, there we go. You can come in. And if we get this one as well, this one at the bottom would not be too bad to get our hands on because that's 551 as well. I think it might. Yeah, it went. We haven't got enough slots available. Come on, everybody. Come on. Let's get things moving quicker. Um, you're going to take some cargo and a little bit of fuel. So, yeah. OK, we'll accept that as well. So things are looking OK. Things are looking all right. But uh, yeah, we could just do with getting our money up a tiny bit quicker. Here we go. It's all coming together very, very nicely indeed. So still got loads of cargo. We've got 1.4k gallons of fuel and we now have over two and a half grand. And also we have researched base hospitality. This is very exciting. Now, I do like the look of this because you've got your little sort of you've got your airport terminal in it, and that's fine. That's where people can go and sit and relax and what have you. But this thing here aero snacks this sounds completely brilliant so it says here flights are a lavish affair reserved only for the richest members of society which is why we're trying to bring them in because they'll pay us lots of money as passengers expect their every need to be attended to food and water is basically a necessity especially taking into account the fact the ride is the most comfortable as passengers are subject to lots of engine noise turbulence and long journey times so what this does is we get to serve food and drink on the plane which is completely brilliant. So I like the idea of being able to serve people lovely tea and cake while they're on their plane to make them just feel a heck of a lot better. So um, yeah, we've got ourselves a small food factory that we could set up and then a little kind of catering wagon thing. The only thing is, this is going to take an absolute age to get unlocked. That's going to take so long to actually get unlocked. And I think... I think we need some other stuff first to actually get unlocked so we can schedule passengers. So we might need to get other stuff done first, but wait there, Aero Snacks. We shall come back to you as soon as we can because I love the idea of this. Just be able to serve you know, tea and biscuits and cake on the flight. Sounds wonderful. However, what we need, where is it? We need this thing, I think. So where, yeah, the game doesn't have a sort of an inbuilt tutorial as such. It doesn't have a sort of in-game tutorial. But there are little sort of uh, tutorial screens, if you like, that can try and help you understand things. And I think we need this. I think we need flight scheduling in order to get passenger flights in. I think that's how this works. So let's get this done now. Let's get flight scheduling unlocked. It's only four hours. So we'll get that done, please. That's all very nice. And then, yeah, we've got ourselves this big pile of money. We could do with getting a bit of fuel momentarily. When it goes down below sort of 1,000, we'll get some more. But now, I do want to get in our little wooden air traffic control tower because we've had access to that for a while and we've not built one. It's only $700, so we can afford it. 
So let's get one of these in. The only thing is, I don't know what it does. I've no idea what it does or where it can go. It looks like, it looks like it snaps to the main sort of roadway just there. I mean, can we put it there? So it's as near as possible to the planes because I feel like it probably should be quite close to the action. So let's put it there. What does it do? What do you do, Air Traffic Control Tower? Apart from your stopped, hang on, hang on. Move time on normally. Maybe that'll be unstopped when somebody turns up to work there. Or are we not allowed this? Hang on, why, why is it stopped? Can we make it unstopped? Uh, oh, no, there you go. It's open. It's open. Wonderful. Okay, so what does it do? What do you do, Air Traffic Control Tower? I mean, okay, yes, you control the air traffic, but what exactly in-game benefit do you give? Is there anything obvious? <laughs> I can't see anything obvious. Maybe it just makes things, maybe it just makes things move around a bit quicker. Maybe it just makes things, you know, sort of flow a little bit better. Now there's somebody actually organising this properly from, you know, a great big kind of high up tower type thing. Uh, let's get you in because you move a lot of cargo. Hello, welcome aboard. And down here, can't help but notice there is a thing that says Capital Construction. Is this our terminal? Yes, it is. An early days airport station which is a wonderful bit of terminology. Um, $1,790. That's quite expensive. That's quite expensive. Okay, that's fine. I mean, we could get one of them in, but not now. I think maybe, maybe we save up for that. We make sure, maybe we could do that tomorrow. And what time is it? It's going to five o'clock. So we've got a couple of hours left of today. And then we'll see what money we've got at the end of the day. But we are at some point going to need to buy some fuel. We're going to need to stock up on fuel. Uh, yeah, cargo is absolutely fine, but fuel is going to come down a little bit because, of course, we're getting people in that require some fuel. So, yeah, like you and indeed you there. So, yeah, we need to stock up on fuel a bit, but I still think we'll have the money for it. I still think we'll be okay in terms of cash. It's just what cash we have left afterwards to see whether we can build our nice sort of passenger airport terminal thingy. Yeah, we're definitely going to need more fuel. So let's go and get another 4,000 gallons of fuel. So there we go. Thank you very much. And that still leaves us with a grand. We're still looking okay in terms of fuel supplies. It's not been delivered yet. That's the only thing. It's not here yet. So hopefully, hopefully they can deliver that soon enough so we don't have planes sort of waiting. And you're only after cargo. That's absolutely fine. In you come. Because, yeah, we're still going to have loads and loads and loads of sort of uh, loads of extra cargo. So when they deliver the 140 cargo, we're still not going to be able to take it all, which is a bit of a shame. Look at the money just absolutely pouring in. We've got a few minutes left. Can we get in a last person? Um, you. You seem pretty good. You take away quite a bit of cargo. Is anybody else going to gonna leave and free up a slot? Doesn't look like it, does it, Al? That's a bit of a shame. Oh, look, the little trucks have got their lights on. Oh, that's quite nice. Do the planes not have lights? How do the planes see when they're driving around the runway? I mean, the little trucks do. I like that. They've got tiny little lights on. Okay, that's very good. That's a nice touch. So yeah, at night time, they actually have their sort of their vehicle lights on. That's good. Okay, let's just get through then. So this lot here will still pay a little bit because they're still going to be being refueled and restocked and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, the money is ticking in quite nicely. What we might need to do, however, we're going to pay out 560 overnight, aren't we, to get the sort of cargo top back up. And then we're going to be paying wages. So I think we'll leave it until tomorrow morning. We'll see how much money we have in the morning. And then we'll try and get our passenger service thing set up. Although it's not going to be too long until we've got the, um, until we've got the next bit of research done, which could be quite nice. But uh, right, OK, let's just move time on nice and quick. Still got a couple of airplanes in our sort of little airfield right now. So we need those to sort of you know, be gone and fly away. And we've unlocked flight scheduling. Okay, this is wonderful. Now, I don't know how any of this works because I've not actually ventured this far into the tech sort of tutorial things. So this will be a voyage of discovery for us all where I imagine most things will go horribly wrong. But yeah, it's fine. It's fine. The journey will be fun, I'm sure. So what do we want to get done now? So are we behind the curve on anything? Well, the, the line. It's not a curve. It's a line. Uh, not there. Personnel. We are a little bit here. That is quick. That's only 12 bits of research so that's yeah three hours 38 minutes barrel trolleys gives us a fueling boost okay so we can activate this feature in barrel storage if we have this done yeah okay 
let's get those two things done because yeah our staff stay here overnight anyway so that's all fine and there we go just past midnight we have researched barrel trolleys which is exciting so then we'll get fueling personnel training because again that's relatively simple and that means that we can do another fueling boost but maybe on the cars themselves rather than something else. I don't know. But whatever the case, we'll just press the button because we're going to get that done. Because that means that, yeah, we're sort of up to date with the year that we're in, which is now 1919. We have rocketed forward in time there. So, yes. OK, right. That's fine. We'll get that done. And again, back to just pressing the button and speeding time on nice and fast. And there we go. The next bit of research is done. So now where do we want to go? I mean, this is tempting. This is tempting to get some proper sort of tarmac paving. That would be quite nice. So we can get proper tarmac taxiways and tarmac roads. That sounds quite good to me. And again, it's not that sort of, it's not that long to get done. Seven hours, 35 minutes. That's actually okay. I think we can get that done. I think let's, let's get that done. Let's get ourselves some proper nice sort of road surfaces underway. That sounds lovely. And I think, I think we can just move Tom on nice and quick now until we get to the start of the day. So we'll pay out a big load of money on maintenance. Okay, there we go. And already we've got people requesting sort of, you know, access to the airfield. Okay, wonderful. So now 1,957, that costs 1,790 to get that in. So I don't think we should put in, put in our little sort of uh, passenger terminal thing right now, because that might leave us a little bit short of the money. But I don't think we're too far off. I do not think we're too far away at all, which is all very exciting indeed. However, just thinking about it, do we want to stock up on vehicles here? This can accommodate two vehicles. I think maybe, maybe let's get another vehicle in our air cargo warehouse. Let's go like that. And then let's buy another one of those vehicles. So now we have five vehicles delivering the sort of the cargo stuff and obviously taking it away from the planes as well. And then we've got ourselves three uh, fuel vehicles. That's okay. We do need to get the other thing in as well, don't we? We need to get the large barrel stock in. That's 1,400. Okay, so that's, again, it's not too much more expensive than the previous one. But yeah, that means that we can have two vehicles sort of stocking up on fuel at the same time, which could be very, very handy. That could speed up operations a little bit. Okay, I mean, we do want that in, but then also, yeah, I want to get this in. I want to get the fancy kind of airport terminal in because I want some passengers. So... Okay, fine. Well, do you know what we need to do right now? We need to get some money in because we can't do anything with $1,367 because that's not enough. Oh, we've gone into a new era. Okay, that's very exciting. I do like the kind of the Art Deco kind of header thing here. That's very nice. So, Dawn of Airlines 1920. Progress is always driven by dreamers. Yesterday, it was just an idea. Today, it is a young and rapidly growing business like mushrooms after rain. Are you likening the aviation industry to mushrooms? That's a bit weird. Regular passenger flights. No regulation holds back development. Sometimes what happens in the sky resembles chaos and on the ground here. But this is extremely interesting chaos and also quite profitable. Ah, profitable chaos. The best type of chaos. Era features more travel, small and medium aircraft, scheduled flights and more complex aircraft will require flight check services. Okay, that's interesting. But more travel more travel that's quite good if we can get in nice and quick on these sort of passenger services that might be quite good and scheduled flights now yes we need to look at that at some point we need to look at scheduled flights but we still need more money we still need a little bit more money before we can go forth and do all of the exciting passenger service things there we go that looks a bit healthier three thousand three hundred and twenty two dollars so now i think Let's get this in. Let's get in our little airport terminal. Now, where do we want to put this? How big is it? Okay, it's not too big. It's not too vast at all. So I don't think if the people coming here, if the people coming to our little terminal are going to be rich people, they're not going to want to be right near the runway because that's going to be noisy and it's going to be unpleasant. They're not really going to be want to be near these things either, are they? near the things that are yeah, full of oil, that's you know, aviation fuel in barrels, that's not going to smell very nice. They don't want to see all the people loading stuff onto you know, sort of little cars and cargo being sort of hauled about. These are you know, rich, important, affluent people. They don't want to be with the, with the riffraff down here doing the work. They want to be somewhere else exclusive. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking we put it over here. Let's put it over here on the way in so yeah, they can come straight in, get into the little sort of airport terminal. So it looks like it has roads sort of connected already. So can we just sort of snap, can we snap that in? 
don't think we can snap that in. Hang on, if we put it that way? No. Why can't we snap that into position? Does it have to go in a particular place? It doesn't connect to the, the taxiways or anything. No. Okay. I don't know where to place this. Then. Hang on, hang on, hang on. If we just put this down and then... Can we move things? Can we move buildings once they're done? Hang on, hang on. Right. I need to investigate whether we can move something. Let's have a look at you. Can we somehow move this building when we've actually got it? Can we click it and then sort of drag it around or anything? I don't think we can. I don't know if we can move buildings once they're down. I'm not entirely sure, which makes me a bit nervous about putting this down. I think, I think we need to put it here. And I think, let's have it facing everything going on so they can see the planes come in because that'll be an exciting thing. If we put it here, uh, I assume that's the front. Yes, that is the front. Airport terminal, it says on it in big letters. So, okay, that must be the front. So, yeah, pop that there and then hope that we can connect it up via roads. If not, we might be in for a little bit of a problem. Let's let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Oh, they have vehicles as well. Okay, and then we need to connect it up with a grass road. Does that work? Yes, it does. Okay, that's a bit weird that it doesn't snap to the existing road network, but okay, that's all good. Okay, so now that's connected in, what does it actually look like? I like the look of this. So let's have a look. What does it do? It says airport terminal, and then above the door, I think it says, <laughs> I think it says terminal. In case you didn't see the massive you know, person-sized letters on the roof that says airport terminal, it also reminds you politely above the door. Okay, and then there's a little bus depot, and then a nice little sort of a little sort of covered walkway. So you don't have to go outside to get the bus. You can go from the terminal, walk along the nice covered walkway, into your bus, and then go and get your plane. Okay, right, this is wonderful. So we need some vehicles then. So what are we on? We're on baggage gate. So we're going to need a baggage vehicle. Okay, so let's get a Busung ZU500. Classic vehicle. Um, yeah, okay, if that's what you're saying we need to buy, we'll have one of those, thank you very much. And come out of that. And then on the passenger gate, we need a vehicle as well. Okay, so it's two different vehicles. I don't think we're going to have loads of passengers. So I think we only need one vehicle type for now. And this is, this is the Wright Omnibus S1, which sounds different. That sounds different. It's a different type of car. It's sort of bussing. It's a Wright. Wright introduces the Omnibus S1 as a testament to the power of the motor. It is the most recognisable feature of this passenger automobile, right after the fact that it is the roomiest car of its class. The most capacious motor under a thousand in price. Wow, that's like straight from the uh, straight from the sales brochure there. Okay, how much is it? It's quite expensive. It's quite expensive to buy, but I think we need it. Okay, let's buy that. So now we have ourselves sufficient vehicles in here ah right and we want to connect it to all of the different sort of uh, the different parking bay things okay that's in so now do we wait for passengers do we have to schedule I'm trying to think back to the tutorial thing i think we now need to schedule some flights um okay ah right here we go right yes we need to say which one of our little parking bay ramp things actually is going to be used for scheduled flights i think I mean, let's have number one. Let's have number one. It's the nearest to our terminal, so less driving for our wonderfully affluent customers. So, okay. So that turns ramp number one into a scheduled flight ramp, which means we are going to have less capacity for all of the other ramps. Because, yeah, we've obviously got one ramp down, so we are going to be able to service less kind of planes as they sort of demand to come in. How do we then schedule a flight? How does this work then? I'm not entirely sure. Um, okay, right, right. We've got that done. We've got a flight schedule. I assume we drag something onto here. Um, okay, right. That's not entirely obvious. This thing is lit up. The contracts window has lit up. So we can get to this now. So do we need to take a contract with an airline? Aha. What is all this? Okay. So the Royal Postmaster's Office, Smith & Brothers Delivery aircraft transport and travel and the royal aviation company they're an international airline they sound quite good 
airline window. What is all this? Are you going to help us, game? A luxury airline run by one of the royal families of the Europe. Oh my goodness me, one of the royal families of the very Europe itself. Very popular among rich businessmen and nobility because of its highest quality standards. Operates primarily long-haul routes and requires all the best services available. RAC has the biggest and most modern airplanes in its fleet. I like the sound of these. I like the sound of the Royal Aviation Company. I think, do we go for them? So that's people. That's people more than goods, I think. What about aircraft transport and travel? Can we see what they're shipping? I don't really know what they're moving. They've got 50% rating and they have no tier to anything. So that is, what's that doing? Uh, has medium and large airplanes, operates cargo flights, as well as limited numbers of passenger flights. Like, I don't really want that. Smith & Brothers delivery sounds like a cargo thing. That's going to be, that's going to be cargo. Yeah, thriving air cargo delivery airline. So I'm not so fussed about cargo stuff. And the Royal Postmaster Office is going to be cargo. Yeah, that's going to be sort of stuff. Okay, I think we might want to go for the Royal Aviation Company, just because we want passengers we want passengers to come in. Okay, let's sign this. Does that give us 500 money or do we spend 500 money? Do you know what? Whatever. There we go. We got 500 money. Okay, so we've signed a contract with the Royal Aviation Company. Now what do we do? The passenger type is a chap in a suit and there's no scheduled flight. Ah, ha ha. Right. Scheduled flights. Do we now go back to here and schedule? Do we click and drag? Do we click and drag to schedule some flights? Uh, okay, right. I'm going to go and click lots of buttons and hope that something happens that looks like we're scheduling flights. Oh, it's in here. I see. So we sign a contract and then we have to sign a contract. It's a little bit strange, but okay. So we've signed a general kind of contract with the Royal Aviation Company. So they said, yes, okay, that's fine. We will send some planes your way. And then we have to sign another contract for them to sort of indicate how many planes are coming our way and what we're supposed to do with them. So this one we can't sign. I don't know why we can't sign that one. I have no idea. Can't have more than five unscheduled flights. Now naught, but we'll be 10 after signing. Ah, we can't have 10 flights. Okay, right. So that we have got to grow to get that far. So that is, that's five flights. That's five and that's three. I think maybe, oh, hang on. They want different things. They want fueling. That wants outbound passengers. That's outbound passengers. And that's outbound cargo. Oh, you're welcome to some outbound cargo. That's absolutely fine. So for this one here, we would get 300 for a signing bonus and 420 income. I think maybe let's start number of flights three. Let's start small just to see if this actually all works because this might all fall apart in a spectacular kind of heap. So let's sign this three flights. I don't know what cycles count is. I assume that we have to do that twice. So we have to do three flights twice. Okay, the turnaround time is one and a half hours, and I assume we can accommodate a plane of that size. I hope we can, because if we can't, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do. Let's sign this. So we should get a bit of money for that. And now, can we go to... Yes, yeah, so we've got three flights coming in. Right, now do, now do we go to schedule some things? So do we now click and drag? They're at the bottom. To be scheduled. Aha! Okay, here we go. So can we get these in? So these are going to arrive. Are they going to arrive the following day? Oh no, hang on. That one isn't going to arrive the following day, but the rest are going to arrive the following day. Um, Is that allowed? Like we've got that one there for the following day. Can we fit them all in? We might be able to fit them all in. No, we can't. We can only just not fit them in. Okay, that's all very unfortunate. Let's put one in at eight and one in at whatever that is, 12 and one in at four. There we go. So in fact, no, what's the gap between that? What is the gap? Hang on, that's not even at 12. So yeah, that's two hours and that's two hours. That looks somehow different, but it's not that. Okay, there we go. So number one coming in at eight, number two coming in at 12, number three coming in at four o'clock. Okay, hopefully they're happy with that. So do we tick to confirm those changes? They are now locked in. So those flights are going to come in at those times. Oh, this is very exciting. So now the only thing is we've got to wait an entire day. We've got to wait an entire day now to see our passenger terminal thing actually do something, which is a bit of a shame. I think what we might need to do is 
now that we've actually lost one of our sort of uh, one of our bays there to you know scheduled flights i think we need to get another one of these in i think that might be quite a wise idea hang on where is that so pop this in and yeah that can go just there and then we need to connect this up to everything of course so connect that to there and uh, come out of that and connect that to uh oh hang on that's already connected that they're already connected to the new thing that is already connected somehow that one is not okay so relink that ramp okay that's all good hang on that's is that linked to anything then they've got no link thing oh no hang on we need to relink all of those why can't we have can they both not be linked oh we can only have one cargo thing applying to one ramp at any one time is that right that seems a little bit strange yes it looks like you can only have one thing linked at a time you can only have either this cargo storage or that cargo storage you can't have both so currently the air cargo warehouse i think is linked to things because we can unlink them but the cargo storage is not linked to things because it's got the broken kind of link thing that's probably fine but then do we want to i mean ideally we want to empty out the other one we want to kind of get rid of stuff in here that's got 22 bits of cargo in it can we get rid of this could we move our vehicles over and then just get rid of that one um we're gonna to need to increase our vehicles a little bit so can we move another vehicle over so get a vehicle move you over to the other building okay and then we've got one thing left but that's currently doing a job so hang on then go upgrade the parking slots on that go to here grab this move you over to there so now that's going to say i've got no i've got no uh, vehicles assigned that's all fine and now we just there's a demolish in here wasn't there we just demolish this do we just make it go away make you go away i want to remove the building please there's a little there's a remove button just there which is not lit up this is for road removal that's kind of for re removing roads how do we remove a building game come on give us a hint ah you have to deactivate it first if you deactivate the building then the remove button appears okay right i'm happy with that that is all absolutely fine so yeah our capacity for cargo however has come down that's come tumbling down now if we switch that back on it goes up to 200 172 out of 200 and now we're down to 150 do you know what we might leave it there for now we might leave it there for now i think that seems a little bit strange but yeah okay do you know what that's all good that's all good let's just let's just get time moving let's get time moving let's get some flights in we've got three available bays and nobody's actually wanting to come in can somebody come in there we go hello welcome aboard welcome to i mean yeah who's going to be the first on the new ramp actually um ramp six you can have the honor of going on ramp six first which is a, it's a nice ramp it's a luxury ramp it's really lovely and rampy we have research tarmacadam paving which is all very exciting indeed i mean it makes sense really to get this done here there's a tarmacadam construction discount it makes sense to get that research before we build any paving but i think how long is that gonna take 15 hours so that will be done late into the night but I don't think, do we need to research anything else? Are we lagging behind anything in terms of our sort of line of where we're supposed to be? I don't think so. No, it doesn't look like we are. Hoist and winch, what's that? What does that do? Completing the research, you can activate the hoist and winch feature in the cargo terminal. Oh, it speeds up the loading and unloading in the cargo terminals. Um, Yeah, do you know what? Let's get that. That seems like a nice sort of sensible thing to have we'll just sort of have a nice little hoist and winch kind of boost on moving all of our cargo around oh we've got road markings ever since we got the tarmacadam stuff unlocked look we've got road markings we've got fancy lines on our roads now okay there yeah, look that's exciting i mean i don't know why we need that and i don't know who's gone to the trouble of painting them on a dirt road but do you know what i'm glad they did i assume that this is not actual sort of tarmac we've not sort of auto tarmac that have we um tarmac road yeah that's now no it's it's now not a dirt road that is a tarmac road oh oh that's quite good that's going to be very very good for our fancy passengers because they do not have to drive along on a bumpy road they can drive along on a properly sort of tarmac road okay 
That's very good. I mean, do we want to start replacing taxiway? I mean, can we can we do that? Does that upgrade? Can we actually? Okay, is there an upgrade button? Is there an upgrade button? I don't have to demolish it and build it again, do I? That would that would be a little bit tedious. It'd be nice if we could just sort of upgrade the road sections that are already there. I don't think we can. I'm not entirely sure we can. Okay, do you know what? Right now it's fine. Everything's ticking over nice. Let's just let's just get through today. Let's get to the end of the day. Let's see what money we can make. And uh, yeah, let's get our passenger flights in because that's kind of what I'm most excited about. Also, now when we put the game onto um, the alleged supersonic speed, it is grinding a little bit. It is it's kind of grinding to a bit of a crawl and the sound is going all a little bit strange as well. I don't think it's entirely happy being forced to run at supersonic speed anymore. So um, yeah, maybe this will take a little bit longer than I was expecting. Oh wow, there is a gigantic plane just there, a Handley Page Type W, the finest of all the Handley Page Types, and that wants 13 cargo. Absolutely, yeah, you can come right now. You can come here, you can go to the fancy ramp six, you know, a premium ramp. That's exciting, and that might mean, I mean, yeah, if we get down to 60 cargo, that means that the 140 cargo that's going to get delivered later on actually yeah, will all arrive and we won't lose any. Again, look at all the cargo that people are wanting. Yeah, this is good. This is looking pretty good. We've had to buy some more fuel again because, of course, yeah, we go through that relatively quickly. Is that that big plane? Um, that is a... Uh, oh, no, no, the big plane's coming down here, isn't it? The big plane's coming down onto Fancy Pants Ramp number 6. Is that that one there? Yes, it is. Let's go and look at the big plane. That's that's very exciting, isn't it? That's very, very fancy. I don't know where we're putting 13 great big blocks of cargo in there, but okay, that's fine. I'm, I'm not questioning it. I'm sure the ground staff know exactly what they're doing. And we have Research the Hoist and Winch. Okay, well done, Research Squad. I mean, we're getting a bit close to this on our red line, so let's get this done as well. Cargo Handling Instructions. So what does that mean? So as the decade progresses, the freight weight keeps increasing thanks to the constantly improving airline and design, hence the increasing workload of air freight operations. A systematic approach to the registration of cargo allows to slightly speed up their processing. No extra costs are required and we get a cargo transfer boost. Another seven hours. Yeah, okay. And that should see as good on personnel for quite some time because yeah, the next sort of thing is, I mean, yeah, what year are we in now? 1920, so 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So about, yeah, another five years maybe until those things are sort of then becoming commonplace. I think that's what that means. I think that's their positioning is intentional as to where they sort of, you know, they fit in the timeline of sort of aviation. So, okay, that's absolutely fine. That's all good. We've got quite a bit of money, which is looking very good indeed. Can we fit you onto a ramp? I don't think we can, unfortunately. Um, but our cargo, our cargo has come right down we've got rid of so much cargo which is completely brilliant hang on a minute hang on you can get get rid of five cargo just there as well that might be the last thing we can do because it's going to get to seven o'clock which means that we shut for the evening but there we go there we go that is completely brilliant okay right very happy with how that's gone that's all looking very good big lovely pile of money as well right is there anything in here anymore cargo storage that's got 20 in Hang on, that's got nothing in. That's got, how much storage has the air cargo warehouse got in? Nothing. So if we lose the 20, we'll get 140 delivered overnight. So I think, yeah, I think it's time to get rid of this. I don't think we need this anymore. So let's get rid of cargo storage one. Okay, it's took a bit of road with it, which is all sorts of fun. So, oh no, not that. Let's not put taxiway there. So connect that back up. Um, and now that's got no cargo. Oh, hang on a minute. Have we got things waiting for cargo? I possibly might have just made a terrible catastrophic error right there. <laughs> I think I just got rid of the only cargo that we had. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, this is this is all fine. This is fine. We can sort this. We can we can buy some in. It's it's all okay. We'll just buy. I don't know how much we need. I have no idea how much we need. How much cargo are you expecting? <laughs> This is why I should never be allowed to run a very small airfield because things generally go wrong. Um, I don't know how much they're accepting. I don't know how much cargo they need. Not entirely sure. Um, okay, right. Let's, let's go to it. Let's just get ourselves an instant delivery of um, 20. 
Let's get 20 cargo delivered for 280 money. It's right. We need that to come in right now, I think. Because, yeah, otherwise we're going to not be able to sort of restock things. So that's all fine. Are you taking off or are you coming in? You're taking off. Okay, right, right. This is probably not so bad. Not enough cargo in storage. Yeah, I know, I know. We're on it. We're absolutely on it. We're all good. It's fine. Yeah, we need to load up these things here. It's okay. Some is being delivered. It's all fine. And then, could we get ourselves as well? Could we get the large barrel stock in? Could we get the fancier buildings in? Which would make sense, I suppose. Now we've got the money for it. We could indeed do that. Um, have we got anything else? Oh, hang on. Where about the winch thing? Where's the winch? Can we can we activate the winch? It said we can put a winch on in here somewhere. Boost. Okay. We can boost this. And it costs $500 plus $10 an hour. But it makes that quicker. $10 an hour. That's okay. That's okay. We won't do it right now because that's wasting money overnight. But yeah, okay. Right. We'll think about that. Right. Let's make sure that our cargo gets delivered. I think that might be it there, actually. So yeah, there we go. We've got some cargo. We've got a little bit of it. So hopefully that's enough for these planes to get their stuff. And then you know, they can go away and what have you. Let's hope that's enough. Otherwise, we're going to have to go <laughs> buy a tiny little bit more. I think it might be. I think it might. Oh, it, it's just enough. I think it's just enough. Yeah, okay, right. They're restocking. I think it's another two going into there. That plane is all good to go. Thank you very much. $358 comes our way. And that is splendid. And now, when they deliver the, um, the $140, that will be okay. That will fit quite nicely into our air cargo warehouse. Okay, right. Let's get this thing in then. Let's put in the large barrel stock. Drop that in. And then can we just... Hang on a minute. Yeah, this is confusing. That's got, that's got a lot of fuel in it. Can we just transfer the fuel over? Can we move the fuel over? Like the vehicles, we can move them over. We can say, okay, you to there. You... Oh, hang on. What have I just done there? Hang on. Um, you relocate to oh we can't hang on a minute hang on um go to vehicles extra parking slot yeah go over to the new place so this place hasn't got anything and then can we move the fuel from here into there we must be able to sort of move the barrels over i'm not sure we can i don't know how to move the barrels around if we can do that sort of thing so if we just switch that off yeah, we lose a great big pile of fuel. We lose loads and loads of fuel. So that's probably not going to be the best thing for us to do. So how about we move one of those vehicles back? Let's move one vehicle back to over there. And then when that eventually runs out of fuel, or when it's low on fuel, we'll then switch it off and then kind of delete it. But okay, right. Now it's just a case of moving time on until either the research is done or some sort of delivery comes by. And cargo handling instructions is done. So what do we want to get done next? I mean, yeah, now the sort of red line is moving on to these things here. So wooden facility for ramp service. So a ramp service hangar. Ah, okay, yes, it did mention this. So yeah, new flight safety rules. Yeah, okay, let's get ourselves a little kind of ramp service hangar thing set up and sort of researched. Okay, so it's morning. We've got a few flights coming in to get fuel and what have you. But more importantly, it's a very, very exciting day indeed because we should see our first passengers arrive at our airport terminal. They can enjoy the duty-free in there and the expensive restaurants and all that kind of stuff. And then hopefully... Hopefully the whole process will work. They will get in their little kind of transporty car thing and come down here and get onto the scheduled plane. Now this is very exciting because it's not actually that far away. Let's actually move Tom on nice and quick. Let's get our first passenger flight sorted. So it should be coming in at eight o'clock. So imminently, in, in mere minutes, here we go. Eight o'clock. So there we go, eight o'clock. Can we see a big fancy plane that might be bringing in or taking away some very important people. Because of course the company we signed the contract with, they deal with you know, very important fancy businessmen and you know royalty and politicians and stuff like that. So we could, we could see some very esteemed guests. Let's move it on. Is that it? Hang on, is that it? Is that the fancy thing? The Royal Aviation Company, yes, there it is. Oh, it's a fine plane. It is a fine plane indeed. Okay, welcome. Welcome. We've prepared our our best uh, ramp for you. Apologies for the grassiness of it. We're we're you know we're doing some upgrades right now. Oh no! Don't no wooden facility for ramp thing, my Bob. Uh, advanced driver training. Yeah, that's the next thing we need to do. Get that done out of the way. Yeah, this is exciting. So that thing's gonna pull in. 
which is all good. There's the little... Right, that's the right... What's that? The right omnibus. So that thing there is... Is that going to pick up people or is that picking up luggage? Um, I think that might be picking up people. Its doors are open. There's our first passengers. Oh, this is very exciting. Right, look. Passengers. Possibly a child there, which is also as exciting. Right, hang on. Let's keep everything running. Let's keep things ticking over because, you know, we've still got the other flights coming in. Oh, look at this. Oh, my God. How many people are there in there? How much room is in there? This special TARDIS kind of plane thing. Oh, my word. <laughs> wow. Oh, right. I just, just keep on coming out there. Yep. Anyone else? Yep. Another person. <laughs> Crikey. It was very snug in there, I imagine. Okay. Um, and now they're just going to get onto their little... They're in their little sort of fancy truck. And they're going to go along our lovely, proper sort of tarmac road. And then go over to our our little terminal. Oh, this is wonderful. This is wonderful indeed. I like this. This makes us feel like, yeah, this we're properly... We've arrived. We are now properly here. Let's move time on. Let's see what happens. Right, so pulls up and our people presumably get out and go into the terminal. They go into the terminal through the wall and the window, but okay, it, uh, if that's what you want to do. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, it's an unusual way of doing it, but I'm not, you know, I'm not a fancy businessman or nobility or a politician. Maybe that is what people who've got loads of money do. They just sort of walk wherever they like and they want to walk there. Um. Okay, right. That's all working very nicely. Now we need to go back to here. So what are you waiting for? Parking service, boarding no workers, and loading cargo is happening. Ah, are we going to pick up some people? Maybe we're going to pick up some people. Hang on, move time on. You've driven around. Ah, now, yeah, there are people in the terminal that are now boarding the little truck. And then that's going back this way. And it's coming down here. They're going to get back onto the plane. Oh, this is wonderful. This is working very well indeed. So... In come the people. That is beautiful. And then parking service is happening. So yeah, they're just sort of tuning the plane up and what have you to make sure it's all sort of ready and safe to then take off and take those passengers elsewhere. And I think it is ready to go. Yep, there we go. It is leaving. We have ourselves our slot freed up. And um, yeah, plenty of time before 12 o'clock for the next one to come in. And that will get us a flat $420. So that's okay. That's actually not too bad. I was expecting, I'll be honest, a little bit more. I was expecting a tiny, tiny bit more. But do you know what? That's all fine for now. So there we go. Let's just make sure, make sure they get underway. Here we go, you. Oh, straight out. Straight out. Passenger plane. Yeah, we, we, give, them, we give them special sort of treatment because they've got passengers. And there you go. Up, up and away on your journey to wherever it is you're going. Safe travels, my friend. Safe travels. Thank you for stopping by. You're the you're the first people who've taken off from our airport. Please tell people good things about us. Oh, there we go. There we go. That worked very well indeed. We've managed to sort of muddle through scheduling a flight, which is, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm frankly amazed that it worked. So now we just need to think about whether we want to get more flights in, schedule some more things, sign some more contracts, all that kind of stuff. Oh, let's get you in for some cargo. Thank you. Um, and um, yeah, we used to keep doing the research. We have a new thing to build by the look of it. Ah, yes. Our sort of mechanics and maintenance thing. We want to get that in. That's very important. And yes, we need to look at our little sort of, our sort of now sort of old and slightly redundant kind of fuel thing as well. But do you know what? I think, I think we're at a perfect point to finish up for now. We've had our first passenger flights, we've completed our first scheduled flight, and we've not actually messed it up fabulously, which I'm impressed by. Uh, well done, well done us. A round of applause. Good job, good job us. So, um, so yeah, I think we'll finish up for now, come back next time, and then just see what other things we can add to our little kind of, our little airfield here. But yeah, things are going very very well indeed and yeah looking forward to what we can add on next time out hopefully you are still enjoying this if you are please do leave a like that would be most marvelous indeed and also if you're not already then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in sky haven but for now thank you very much for joining me in the geek cupboard and i will see you next time move out of the way friend i'm going to completely ignore you and do some comment moderating <laughs> kung fu croquet Maria, you've broken my heart. There you go, some more flowers that I stored on the back of my pants. Lovely, there we go. As you can see, I'm having the wildest of times. Enormous banana mask. <laughs>